How's it going guys, David here from phonebuff.com and in this video I'm doing a speed comparison test between the Google Chrome browser found on the Nexus 7 and the Safari browser found on the third generation iPad. So I did clear out the browsing history on both devices and they're both connected to the same Wi-Fi network. I actually did a fresh boot on both devices as well so you know, it's going to be nice and fair. I'm going to go ahead and open up both browsers. You could see that I am running no other applications in the background so again it's going to be as fair as possible. Now, something to note, I am leaving on the preloading feature uh, for the Google Chrome browser on, so you can see preload web pages is always on. Basically what that does is it loads up the website as I'm like typing it in, and then uh, when I hit go, it's gonna be like halfway loaded almost, or maybe even fully loaded. But the reason why I'm leaving it on in this case is because in my other video comparing the two devices, you know, I left it off, and a lot of you guys were complaining about, you know, saying that's, that's an advantage that Google Chrome has by taking it away, it's unfair. I felt like it was unfair by leaving it on, but nonetheless, you know, we're gonna do this video anyway to see what the difference is. Now, to make it a little bit fair though, I'm gonna only type in about half the domains here first and then on the iPad, and then for the other half, I'm gonna type it first on the iPad and then on the Nexus 7, so that way it isn't too much of a big uh, advantage. So, well, first website, we'll go ahead and do phonebuff.com, so we'll enter it on the Nexus 7 first. All right, one, two, three. And uh, as you can see, the next seven is done loading and the iPad is still loading it. And there you go, the iPad is done. Let's go ahead and tap on an article really quick so that way we could, you know, test another web page. Now this one, you know, the, the uh, preloading isn't going to be an advantage for the next seven because it doesn't know which article I'm going to actually tap on. So we're going to tap on the Apple Removes YouTube app from iOS 6. So one, two, three. See the content first on the iPad, followed by the Nexus 7, and uh, both of them look to be done, but you know, if I have to give the Windows one, it's gonna be the iPad, because it did show the content first. Let's go ahead and tap on one more article, and uh, we'll do the Google Voice search coming to the iPhone and iPad soon, so one, two, three. And Again, loaded up a little bit faster on the iPad. You can see like the YouTube picture and everything was populated first compared to the Nexus 7. So, so far, the two web pages loaded faster on the iPad. The actual home page loaded faster on the Nexus 7. And that's mainly thanks to the preloading feature. Let's go ahead and go to another website. We'll go to Engadget. One, two, three, go. So I saw the content a little faster in here, but now we got the whole web page and it looks like it's fully loaded, uh, just about, and the iPad's still going, and uh, now it's about done. So let's go ahead and do a scroll test really quick, so that way you know you can see how it'll look when you actually scroll down. So I'm gonna scroll down, you know, pretty fast on both devices, and you can see it looks pretty good actually right now. So I'll scroll up really fast on the iPad, and I'll scroll up really fast on the Nexus 7 and uh, so far so good. Usually, you know, from my past experience, the Nexus 7 does show a little bit of white screen while you're uh, scrolling, but in this case, it's actually not, so that's pretty good. We'll go ahead and tap on an article. We'll tap on this guy right over here. So find the little read more icon. So one, two, three. Content showed up first on the Nexus 7. And uh, that was a really close one. I saw the content first on here. Um, some of the advertisements and stuff pop populated first on here. So you guys can be the judge of that one. I'm not even gonna call it because I didn't really get a good look at it. I'll have to rewatch it uh, on video. So let's go ahead and go to another website. So now, since I've done two websites preloading on here, let's go ahead and type it first on the iPad and then followed by the Nexus 7. So we'll do uh, New York Times. All right, one, two, three, go. Again, most of the content populated first on the Nexus 7, so we have to give the win to the Nexus 7 there. Let's go ahead and tap on an article again. So we'll do this one right over here. One, two, three. And content's populating first on here. It's done. Now this guy's done. So pretty much the theme, you know, even uh, right there, because, you know, just counting one, two, three, it was enough of an advantage for the preloading to actually make a difference and load up the web page faster. So pretty, uh, you know, it's a pretty big advantage to have that preloading and it's it's a nice feature, honestly, I, I do like it. Um, we'll go ahead and type in another website. So we'll do 
we'll do LA times, but this time I'll try to hit go uh, right away. So we'll go ahead and type it in on the iPad first. All right, so I hit go right away. Got the content first here, followed over here. And it's still loading as you guys can see on both. Got the advertisements populated. And uh, that one looked like it finished just about the same time. Um, for the most part, you know, I saw the Nexus 7 having a head start. I know at the last second this caught up. So again, I'm not too sure, but I think the win went to the Nexus 7 there. Uh, we'll go ahead and tap on an article. We'll tap on uh, this HBO Netflix one. So one, two, three. Content first here. And this one's done. And this one's finishing up and there you go, it's done. So for the most part, you know, it seems like with the preloading feature enabled, uh, loading up websites is faster on here, even if I hit them at the same time. So it's pretty impressive. Uh, when I had the preloading feature off, it was actually, you know, the opposite, the, the iPad with the uh, Safari browser was winning just about every time. But now let's go ahead and do some benchmarks because those are real real world tests to see how the benchmarks look. We'll go to browser mark on both devices. All right, so I'll go ahead and run the benchmark on both devices at the same time. And then I'll just kind of skip through the uh, whole process so you guys can see the scores at the end. All right, so the browsing benchmark is done and you can see the Nexus 7 scored a 132,408 thanks to Google Chrome's uh, optimizations and the iPad's browser, the Safari browser scored a 99,898. So definitely a higher score for the Nexus 7 and uh, honestly I'm not too surprised because I know the Google Chrome browser is really optimized. Um, I even, you know, use it, I've compared the Google Chrome browser on iOS to the Safari browser on iOS and the Google Chrome browser actually beat it out. So we'll go ahead and uh, do another benchmark. We'll just do the HTML5 benchmark. All right, so I'm just going to the HTML5 test uh, website and it'll just give us a score. So 369 for browser compatibility and 324 for browser compa compatibility on the Safari browser. So again, from the benchmarks, you know, the Nexus uh, browser, the Google Chrome browser scored better. And uh, from some of the real world tests, as long as we had that preloading feature enabled, it did score, uh, it did, uh, you know, load those home pages faster. The actual articles and web pages loaded faster on the Safari browser. But uh, as far as the browsers go, you know, I have to say the better browser is the Google Chrome browser because I've not only really tested it, you know, uh, between these two, but also on iOS itself between Safari and, uh, Google Chrome, and again, I said Google Chrome actually outperformed it, but you know, hardware wise, you could tell the rendering's a little bit faster on the new iPad. So, you know, you have to give the new iPad the edge there. It seems a little bit more powerful, even though this guy has a quad core CPU. But anyway, that's pretty much it for me in this video. Hopefully, you know, this, you know, answers the questions you guys had, you know, as far as what difference does preloading make if you turn it off and on. Um, but anyway, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.